if, if the embroidery primarily shows the, spa the landscape space of the garden, the fishing ponds, the open air with the kite flying, yeah. and its attendant structures, the, you know, we also looked at the painting uh, mm -hmm. by Wang Chiao that show the interior spaces, right? Mm -hmm. uh, without showing walls, but shows the furniture, the activities, the, the sort of objects that mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. you know, are concerned with. And that, just as we were saying, the, the garden is a space that can be both male and female, even though there's a kind of, we're talking about the primacy of females within the world of the novel. The, what we saw happening in the painting also had both of those elements. Because mm -hmm. there it? has been a man in that painting recently. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. And there's an uh, the absence of men in both paintings. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah I mean, that, that, that's true. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Actually, that's a very good point. Uh, they're there, but they're not there. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the painting, I mean, the painting has three women in it, uh, but, but because the bed is there, the dressing table, you think, well, okay, it's just a bedroom scene, but within the conventions of, of Chinese imagery, the fact that you have, you know, two women dressed in a certain way, uh, but rumpled bedclothes means that they are high-class prostitutes, they're courtesans, so the rumpled bedclothes <laughs> indicates client has, has, has left. Recently so, left. So it's definitely, I mean, that's very clear. It's a very well-worn visual convention and literary convention, but then there's a presence of men in other ways yeah. too, right? Yeah, well, and... Or male activity. Male or, activity. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I want to talk a little bit more about how we know their courtesans. Oh, right, yes. Um, because one of the things... You're going to talk about the shoes, I'm going to talk about... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get right down to nitty gritty. I'm going to talk about feet. They came right um, at me. And actually, actually Carol, Carol noticed this first, and I sort of went bonkers afterwards <laughs> when, when she pointed it out, is the woman making the bed has bound feet and her foot is showing. Mm -hmm. And the lady at the dressing table has bound feet and her feet are showing. And Chinese upper class women's bound feet are, are never represented in in art. You right. see you see bound feet represented in pornography. Yes. So this is yes. this is I'm not going to say this is a pornographic painting. Softcore porn. It's softcore <laughs> porn. Well, that that there are there are so many codes that are so clear yeah. that this is a highly eroticized image. I mean, yeah. in addition to the rumpled bed clothes, there's a clothes hamper right. that has clothing clothes that's been strewn garden. in it. Yeah. The the question that you were asking me, which I deferred answering, um, on top of her bed, yeah. the rumpled bed where a client has yeah. just left, there are books and paintings. Right. So these women who are, who are high class sex workers are also um, literate, mm -hmm. um, highly highly educated. I mean, I, I really think that um, the you know the more fun, the more things you can do with a woman to have fun with right. her, the more fun the woman, the woman is. Right. Um, and so uh, courtesans, high class courtesans, were extremely well educated right. and often talented in a, in, in and, the arts and as the well. Arts. And and this is you know even the painting is you know maybe late 17th or 18th century, but uh, this certainly uh, tradition of courtesans. Uh, becoming not only highly literate but also very sophisticated in terms of practicing the arts uh, in order to uh, relate to their high-class clients. Um, I mean, it's ultimately, if we give the broad context, relate back to, you know, you have arranged marriages and family mm -hmm. alliances mm -hmm. and that that uh, the courtesans filled a kind of romantic, not just a sexual, but a romantic, a romantic. And companionship uh, role in elite men's lives too, mm -hmm. and so in, in that sense, they they participated actively in what m might be termed in some contexts men's activities. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, by that sort of consistent engagement with that through time, it becomes a certain kind of mm -hmm. woman's activity mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think it's it's also worth pointing out what the objects on her dressing table oh, yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a, 
um, a bronze vessel that looks like it's probably a Han Dynasty yeah. bronze vessel. It may be a representation of a replica. Um, it doesn't much it matter. Doesn't really doesn't matter. And in in the bronze vessel oh, yeah. are um, are scrolls that are kind of hastily rolled up and sheets of paper and sheets, sheets of paper. Of paper. Mm -hmm. um, and it sort of it sort of reminds me a little bit of the the clothes in a hamper right, things right. that are kind yeah. of hastily put together. And then there's a whisk. Uh -huh. which would have originally been um, a piece of Taoist iconography, but I think by this time it it's simply um, represents a scholar. Mm -hmm. um, and it's then usually a scholar at leisure. At least. Scholar at leisure, a scholar at leisure. And then there's this amazingly fancy mirror that I believe has a caltrop. Yeah. flower on the back of it. I think it's an 18 petal cow yeah. And it's very, it's very ornate. It's, it's sitting uh, stand. Stand. Clouded, clouded. Clouded. Yeah, linger being a kind of uh, a magical fungus. And then there is the vase that has something come out and coming out of it that we're not quite sure what it yeah. is. Um, I believe one of the latest yes. hypotheses <laughs> is that it's perhaps an incense that's burner. Her. And it that's has that sense of being open work at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which but would be, make it more like a brassiere where you could put embers in and, and then you could light in yeah, and loose incense. But, and so it would frankly, that, that piece at the top, at the that top. there's some abrasion, it does, it, it looks like there's some loss in, in yeah. the painting, but it could be, it looks like a lotus it seed it, pod. Uh, it does, it looks like a yeah. seed pod to so me, too. So that would also make sense because the lotus imagery, while in some con context is Buddhist, Buddhist in this context is, is, is erotic because mm -hmm. the bound feet are called mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the golden, golden lotus. lotus. Right. Um, yeah, so, so it has that erotic, you know, yeah. uh, Connotation. And could you imagine that table? I mean, if everything's so hastily done in terms of the papers or the mm -hmm, scrolls are in mm -hmm. that container and then the clothes are rumpled up, can you imagine that the table, that the mirror was maybe moved onto the table? Maybe when the client is there, oh, she okay. has paper out and she's doing some yeah, 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 yeah. or doing and, and now it's or, time and to. Now mm -hmm. you set that aside and mm -hmm. you get yourself pretty again mm -hmm. for, right. for, for the, the next, next client. Yeah. Next. I, I mean, that's sort of what I looked at when yeah. I saw I mean, I, it. I think that's a great interpretation. Right. Uh, one of the things that I think is so interesting about that painting is that we are clearly seeing a story in the middle. I mean, yeah. there have been things happening, yeah. right. and, and she's getting ready for right. more things to happen. What interests me about the poem, at least as much as the image, is the colophon, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is by a woman named Jo Chi, whose dates are probably 1815, 1814 to 1851. Um, we don't know very much about her. Um, she is married to a man whose family had been officials for generations. He has several sisters who are known as talented women. She is probably married to him as a concubine. Um, and he was an important early editor of the Hong Lo Meng of the Dream of the Red Chamber. And together they composed um, commentary on the novel and she wrote 10 poems on the novel Dream of the Red Chamber. So she's someone whose work is uh, really important when we're thinking about things like this, a fan, well, this fan. Uh, and, and it's interesting, even though that's not one of the poems that she wrote about the novel. It's so interesting that we have a painting with an inscription by a woman that by, wrote by about woman, the novel yeah. and, uh, and the, in this collection. Yes, right? it's extremely it's extremely interesting. And the first line of the poem is how many lifetimes did it take you to become the person in this painting? Right. And it's very clear from um, the metaphors used in the painting that um, that Jo Chi responds to this painting, um, knowing and understanding that uh, that she that this woman, these women, are courtesans. And at the very end of the poem, um, she says, "Choose your clothing carefully; it has to fit your person." And I think the very last line of the poem is something like, um, your morning toilette is as important as your evening toilette. Mm -hmm. And so I think that one of the things that we have 
here is a picture of a woman engaging in a kind of self-fashioning. And then we have a poem um, as a colophon, which is sort of a further meditation on this female self-fashioning. Mm -hmm. And I, I love it that it's a concubine talking about a courtesan, mm -hmm. an extremely well-educated concubine right. talking about an extremely well-educated right. courtesan. But we're still a little bit off from the, um, the elegant, literati, secure lady side right. of things. Right, yeah, definitely. I mean, although some of the same metaphors to describe female beauty and the passing of female beauty are present. For, are present, uh, sure. For, for and, and, too, but and, it's, it's much sexier imagery. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, yeah. Uh, and, and like you said, self-fashioning yeah. in the in the Jochi uh, In the poem. colophon, And yeah. I, I think yeah. that the Jochi poem also is highlighting that that transitory nature, mm -hmm. that yeah. how women, regardless of where they are in society, society. Can, can easily move from being from, favored to right, most favored. Right. And, and that's where the, the issue right. of I mean, self fashioning is. Yeah, so and there's another another line from the poem and now I'm I'm probably I'm not I'm not gonna quote it, I'm just paraphrasing it, but she says something like, This morning's cold, you knew about that last yeah. night. I mean, which yeah. is I think a very poignant yeah. line. Yeah, it's yeah. you know, the lover has left. The lover has left uh, and, and you and knew he, he was he gonna. gonna. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, time, and he may not come back. And, and time will and time, pa and time has passed. passed. Yeah. Right. And as time right. passes right. Yeah. things will change.